Thanks very much. I'm, I'm really thrilled to be here having worked with um, new internationalists down the years, both in the magazine and everything else. I feel it gets more and more difficult as the, as the microphone moves to the left. You feel you have to get more and more profound. So I feel very sorry for you <laughs> at that end of the table. But I do think that for, for, for us at War and Want, the, the idea of internationalism has been an absolutely central issue of how to define it, how to engage in it throughout our rich history and, and certainly going back to the 1970s in particular. And when I was trying to think about how that reflects on what it means to be an internationalist today, I was reflecting on the similarities and the differences because clearly we're in a different space today politically in the geostrategic um, dispensation. But for us, surely internationalism has got to still be political action. It's got to be political action in that global struggle for justice. And I think that's for us where you take solidarity from just easy, cosy statements of support up into another, another, another level. Because it does become a form of political intervention, shoulder to shoulder on the side of the oppressed. And I think that, again, if you look back over the history, Dan talked about it a little bit, we sided very conspicuously and deliberately with liberation struggles, whether it was Bangladesh, whether it was Algeria against the French, Vietnam against the US, not because of all of the similarities we had, but because we wanted to align ourselves with what that political struggle represented. With all of the faults, with all of the imperfections that we all have, we recognize the importance of that political struggle and why we had to stand with it. And that's exactly the same today in respect of Palestine. It's exactly the same in respect of Western Sahara. It's why we oppose NATO imperialism in Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, or Libya. And that still remains to me absolutely fundamental. It's also working with those who are oppressed by the state. And that, again, brings us to South Africa. We stood against apartheid in South Africa. We now stand with all of those movements who've been excluded from the fruits of the victory over apartheid, the social movement struggling to get the ANC to listen to their voices and give them the rights that they deserve. It's also about working with those who are oppressed by transnational capital. And there we do really see now a new era where it's transnational capital spreading out from north and south. Some of those countries which in the past would have been considered to be in the periphery of the world capitalist system, now taking their place in the semi-periphery and challenging those at the core. The old north-south cleavage of the 1980 Brandt Report doesn't hold up anymore. You have capital new imperialisms spreading across the world from Brazil, from China, from India, from Korea, at the same time as the struggles go on within those countries themselves. And we stay with those struggles, not because they're easy wins on the, in the professionalized NGO world, but because they're the right things to do. But the other side of internationalism, I think, has got to be that sense that it begins at home and that our struggles here in our own home spaces, in the political spaces that we occupy, are equally important. And that's challenging the actions and the policies of our political elites, our representatives of the transnational capitalist class. And that does mean, I think, absolutely right, challenging power challenging power, not cozying up to power. And I think for me, working again in that international NGO world, this is where the sectors which we engage in have gone badly wrong. I want to sort of emphasize, Dan says it's a shame about professional. It's not a shame, it's a real scandal because all of that professionalism has meant that we've lost any political base. It's all become a technical, rational, measured game. The metrics of aid, if you give out this many pounds, how many cataract operations can you achieve? That's basically what it's been reduced to and that is a fundamental problem because it means we have abandoned the social movements, the communities, and the political struggles for change across the world. And the final sort of area of that has got to be then that we bring it back home in terms of our national political action here. Because the international impact of our government's policies are just a reflection of the national governments that we have elected and we have allowed to continue with their program here. If you've got a Tory and Lib Dem government which is imposing austerity and cuts on the population here, you can bet your bottom dollar they're going to be doing the same thing across the world through the free trade agreements, the investment treaties, and all of the other 
projects that they've got on the go at the moment. So what we think is it's got to still be the same old challenges, the challenges to government and to capital, not a cozying up to power, which is where all the smart money now is. It's got to be a question of the rise of corporate philanthropy. What the hell has Bill Gates got to do telling the world how to run it itself? Rather than joining with them in their CSR schemes, the corporate social responsibility, which just means more power to capital to operate on its own terms. And for us also, it's about fighting for the positive alternatives to capitalism. There are thousands and thousands of positive alternatives around the world. We need to support them. We need to unite in solidarity with them, be more than just words and be action that surely is what internationalism means now just as it ever has.